extra, but I know I'm the same. What is up, everybody? What is up? It is your girl EJ, and I am here with my girls. It is time for movie night. Got my girl Moochie and Tamika in the building. How's it going, ladies? Hey. hey. <laughs> What's All up, right, everybody? let's see what's in, <laughs> see what's in the chat. We got Candy Love in the building, Lady Virtue in the building, Daria. Kendall in the building, Rashandra in the building, y'all. I just want to apologize to everybody last week. Uh, I wasn't able to do the live, so I apologize for not giving any notice. But we are here to talk about Kimba today, y'all. It's a BET Plus original, and it's actually based off of a true story. And it's a very interesting interesting story, a very cautionary tale, and something that's very true. And that's a problem in this in this world that we live in today. Um, so we're going to talk about the movie and then, you know, we'll get into some stuff. Let me play this part first because I do want to play this real quick. Let me find. I want to play the first part of the ending. No. I suffered the consequences of choosing to love a man who left me traumatized. A situation far too many women have experienced. Okay. Um, and I think that that holds true. You know, I think there are a lot of Kimbas in prison. And, and when I say that, just stories like hers, you know what I mean? Uh, just of women who somehow have found themselves on the wrong side of things. And now they're serving these outrageous sentences because of, you know, what we would call mistakes or, uh, some of these people were abused and, you know, it was just, it's just so many different stories, but they all lead to the same place. So there's that. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a lot of people, unfortunately, because of the way that the law is written that, um, you know, they was abusing it. We've seen this for years and years and years. Um, of course, it goes so deep with the government bringing in certain things and all that other stuff. And we know that the time for the crime is not the same for certain people with certain colors of skin and certain communities and all of that. The same two people, you know, well, different people, I should say, could do the same crime, but they would get different time for it. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. The the sure fact that a person who has a, a large amount of cocaine can get a smaller sentence than a person who has a small amount of crack right there speaks to a big problem just in general. That doesn't even make sense when you think about it. It should hold the same weight, uh, but it doesn't. And we all know that the reasoning behind it, I mean, it just is what it is. We know that crack is one of those things that is going to be something that's going to have a higher rate in black and brown communities, whereas cocaine is not. And therefore, you see those sentences that are so, so, so different that it just, you know, I, I don't even want, I, I ain't gonna go there, but it's just a lot. Well, you know, it's orchestrated like that for the prison system, the supply to prison system. Because I know when in, in New York, when, and Tamika could be witness to this, when Giuliani was in charge, it was guys getting football numbers back in the day. And and girls would go down for stuff like that because they don't know what's going on. They don't know what's in their house sometimes. And things go left. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's yeah, exactly Giuliani it. was definitely a big part. And then the crime bill, once that was signed, that was a big part in the war on drugs. You know, all of them kind of added to it and it, it just took off and we were the target people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. war on drugs that it's and, so sad. It could get I could get deeper than that because before crack came, the average black family was making more making more money. I know that in New York mm -hmm. than than the um than white people. And then that's when they that's when crack came. Okay, okay. That's what's up. I mean, this really can go so many different ways. It's such a hot topic and it's such it's so deep 
you know, but the thing about it is, is that it's so true. It's one of those things that you really can't, there's no, to me, there's no black and white, there's, well, I won't say there's no, well, yeah, I, there's no black and white to it. There's a lot of gray with it. Mm -hmm. And it just affects a certain set of people more than it affects anyone else. And that is the sad part about it. Yeah. So let's pull up some of these photos and let's get into Kimba. Uh, let me play this real quick too, because I do want to show you guys the actual um, person. So let me yeah, share Yeah, somebody in the chat asked if this a true story. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. And let me know if y'all can see the, hold on, let me, let me bring a small so that I can get it. Is this it? Hold on. Wow, we at the bottom. Hold on. Let me put this on the side. Okay, there we go. I like it better like that. Okay, give me a second. Let me play this. Okay, and I'm going to play some of that a little bit later as well, but I wanted you to see the the actual person and who this is. This is somebody who was in a middle-class family. This is someone who was from a two-parent home. She was going to college. She was just starting out her life when all of this stuff hit, and what they did to her was just unimaginable. It was crazy. Uh, let me get the pictures up and then we'll start from the beginning and I'll get you guys take on what y'all think here. Let me get my video files up. I got so much stuff on my computer, Moochie, y'all. I got to get rid of some of this stuff. Yeah, I was doing that today, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Pictures. All right, y'all. So when the movie first starts out, they're kind of giving us this back. We're seeing we we're seeing the original and then they kind of travel us to when Kimba goes to college and she's going to, uh, you know, do what every college student does. They go to parties. Uh, but at this particular party, she's going to run into who, who did he play? Which will time? He, he played Ghostface. OK, Ghostface. <laughs> Yeah, he played Ghostface. I like him. Um, Sadiq. His name is Sadiq. I don't remember his last name, but his first name is Sadiq. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, when I saw him, I was like, oh, okay. And then I was like, yeah. uh, I ain't like him in here. But oh, yeah. yeah, but he did a good job, though. When he do a, if yes, a, he a, person do a he good did. job, when you was like, yo, I can't stand this dude. Oh, I couldn't stand him. I thought he was like, he was real nice in the beginning, though. Very That's nice. That's how he roped her in. Y'all think that she had low self-esteem? Uh, no, I don't think it was that. I think that she really loved this guy because the way he wooed her in the beginning. And, and when you like that, you always think you can get it back to that. Yeah, I also think it was just like, her first experience and not being used to that and not, you mm -hmm. know, even though uh, she came from the home that she came from <laughs> um, this, you know, everything with college was new to her. Cause I think one of the first things we saw her being real nervous, kind of being insecure about the way she looked, not really feeling like she fit in with the people and her friend was kind of, you know, trying to push her like, girl, we in college now, this is what we supposed to be doing and you fine. Let's get out here. You know, you're mm -hmm. going to party. And he was one of the first people that seemed he like met. he interacted with her. And, you know, right off the bat, you beautiful, you pretty. What's your name? Oh, that's your whole name, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was real charming in the beginning. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I think she was sheltered. Uh, you know, like someone said in the comments, I do think she was sheltered and she wasn't really exposed to a lot of things. Therefore, you know... It's, it's, I was about to say Sadiq because <laughs> I was like, oh, Candy had put Sadiq in there. Uh, but but uh, Khalid, because his name is Khalid in here, but that's not his real name. Y'all know they changed his name for <clears throat> movie purposes. But uh, but he showed her something different. He showed her this attention and she liked it. He bought her gifts. I mean, right from the jump, dude was buying gifts. And when I first looked at this, every time I look at something, all I ever think about now, Tamika, is every time you say about the representative, I said, that, sh that ninja showed yep. the representative. Always sending the representative. Yep. <laughs> so 
he shows up and takes her to his place, y'all. I said, yeah. Okay, Khalif. Okay. So anyway, y'all, what did y'all think about this whole showering of gifts and how she reacted to it? Um, I mean, did y'all see any warning signs? I knew we knew what the story was about, but just from that part, did you really feel like, did you really know where it was going with it or how much she was going to be involved or all this, you know? I felt like it was going really fast and he was kind of coming on strong, even though she had initially said like, oh, I have a boyfriend. And I remember it was a part where he's like, your boyfriend mind me giving you this, your boyfriend mind mm -hmm. this. And it's like, no, no. I'm like, no, slow down. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got to be going on fast. But yeah, <laughs> got caught up in it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you know what though, with, with with um him in the beginning, like I think that was her first boyfriend, like you said, Tamika. So for somebody, the way he was giving her stuff, and it was like stuff from Tiffany's, yeah, high-end clothes, all of that. And even though you know she came from a good home, so in her mind, she probably thinking like how her parents was, because you know you hear stories like that and things of that nature. That's why I think she got roped in like that. Okay. That's what's up. Let me see. Let me see if I can pull up what she's going to say because I think she's going to tell us here. Oh, shoot. Hold on. I'm trying to push play on the thing. What is it? I got to push. Because they don't point that out in the story how much older he was. Yeah, I knew he was older. I didn't know it was eight years older because I just was thinking like he seemed like he had his own place. He didn't really seem like he was in the mix of the college kids. And then even nah. when he, I don't want to jump too far ahead. I'll wait. Gonna, you know how Jamuchi say track shoes. But he was a little too comfortable with the parents. Yeah, this watch. That part. Yeah, but yeah. even the mother wasn't like, and to me, it's like he was very impressionable. Like, you know how you say, Tamika, his representative came? His representative stuck around for a while, though. Like, you, he stuck around for a while. He even had the parents fooled. Yeah, because I thought the parents was going to ask him more than what they did. I know he made a joke about law school and he was going because he figured if his sister was in the insurance and she could do it, then he could do it. And then he asked for a beer and they looked a little stuck for a minute. But then the dad was just like, oh, I'll have a beer, too. And I'm like, we ain't going to we ain't going to say nothing more. We ain't going to. What? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He was he was too, like, I mean, eight years older, that put a lot more perspective in it for me because that also lets me know that because as someone who's dated someone that was older when I was younger, people, it, it's, it just, it's just, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but something about it is just different. And sometimes you feel like they know more and it's almost like you're more willing to be led than to necessarily follow what you have to say. Like it's, you are more easily, I guess you could say naive. You're, you're definitely way more naive because of that. So I, it, it made a lot of sense. I was like, oh, okay, okay. I see what's happening here, but yeah, you're right. The parents, they didn't ask a lot of questions. I was shocked by the whole beer thing because I'm thinking that she has to be about maybe 18, 19. And I'm like, do they know how old he is? You know, like I had a lot of questions when that particular part came up. But anywho, so <laughs> here we go. More gifts, more gifts. And it seems like this is throughout their relationship. But what we are noticing is that Kimba is starting to um, she's starting to miss class. Just like all these little, you know, you know, you kicking it with this dude and now you with him more than you supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Your parents are calling, you're not answering. Oh my goodness. What was you thinking, Moochie, when all of this was going down? It, I saw she was messing up with her friend. I, her friend didn't really talk to her. I know she gave her the warning in the beginning, but it was like, you know, she said like a little comment and that was pretty much it. But I, I I felt like, oh, man, she's messing up now. But it was like, ah, uh, I, I didn't like the, that's This is when I, the beginning when I started not liking him. Okay. Yeah, he was very not likable. Mm -hmm. Very not likable. 
Um, so anyway, the friend is starting to see that, but then we're going to see, did y'all ever think like, well, I'll ask that in a minute. This is the first time when Kimba actually sees that something is going on and he tries to play it off. Like, I don't even know, Tamika, what, I, I can't even remember how he played it off exactly because it's almost like he doesn't acknowledge it. He just tells her to go back upstairs. What were you thinking about this part? Yeah, when she came downstairs, it was like, he, you know how your eyes get big and you like, oh shoot. And he looking at the girl and I think it was a guy there too, looking at them as if to say like, well, why y'all didn't warn me that she was coming or oh shoot, she's seeing it. And then of mm -hmm. course it's like, oh, it's no big deal. Just, you know, go back upstairs, go back upstairs. And I'm like, uh, no, okay. Another warning, another red flag <laughs> thrown in your uh, face. Well, you know, even though I know she's not really familiar with all this stuff, I get it, but Gotcha. Mm -mm -mm. He, that he, was the beginning. Was, I was like, I, that dad looked weird because she, even the girl looked kind of jealous. Like, didn't she give like a jealous look? When yeah, she was giving Kimba her a jealous in? look from the beginning. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah, so it was just like, and when she said dad, I was like, this something ain't right with this. Cause, but at first I thought she was with the guy, the other guy. Mm -hmm. so, and then when I seen him, I, oh man, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep it right here. <laughs> Nah, you you right though, because that's why I was like, I said, I guess I'll just wait because I thought that that was interesting. But this is when we're going to see the jealousy really come. I was like, what in the world? This is when I was really like, OK, so either y'all talking or you like him and he ain't paying you no attention. I don't know which one it is just yet, but something ain't right with y'all, because when she when he when she when she sends dude over there to dance with her uh -huh. um, and then he comes in, he kind of just pushes her to the side. And it's, right. it's remember, I was like, okay, so maybe she just like him. But then, you know, later we find out something different, but man. Yeah, yeah. I figured it was either she liked him or he was paying attention to her before Kimba, Kimba came on the scene. And now that Kimba's on the scene, he's not paying her any attention and attention's going to Kimba. So that's why we going to do the setup and we going to send homeboy over there like, oh yeah, go ahead over there and dance with her. Knowing damn well. That part. He done told her that dress. Remember he talked about that mm -hmm. dress, about that black dress. That was for him. Yeah. And then he come in there and now the representative, the mask is oh. it's all mm -hmm. the way off. So Moochie, kind of talk about this next scene that we're about to get into. I'm trying to make sure I don't put, I'm going to leave it right there because you know all the pictures that start to get more graphic. I don't want nobody to have no triggering moments or nothing. Well, he pissed me off. Cause it's like it came out of nowhere with him with this, and I was like, I didn't think it was gonna go there. This is yeah, this is when he tried to almost choke her, right? Mm -hmm. This when he yeah, I mean he really yeah, went this in. This is real bad. And then I was like, yo, I really, <laughs> I keep saying it, I know, but like that's when I was like, yo, he's garbage. For she sure. needs to get away from him. It's like, it did she stop going to school totally here by now? Mm -mm. Like, she was still going to school. She's just missing school. Yeah, okay. she was just missing classes at this point. The parents was calling and the roommate, her friend, was getting frustrated too. Mm -hmm. We're having to keep lying to the parents mm -hmm. and covering for her. And it's like, you know, call them, let them know what's going on. And yeah, this part was horrible. He he did choke her and a lot more. And, and the fact that he was you know, blaming it on her and saying, oh, the God would have done these things to you, you know, the one that was dancing with her. So therefore, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what would have happened if you would have went home with him. I said, what? Mm. Mm -hmm. That was so... That was I so couldn't believe he did all of that. And, and it seemed like he was mad at her because the other girl was jealous. I mean, what was she supposed to do? She don't know what's... I don't, I don't I didn't think it was that serious. It really wasn't, but you know how people are, and now he's being possessive. So now we see her friend sees the eye, there's the, mm. the neck, and then here we go with the flowers. Ugh, and God. he outside. I mean, the, 
you up. Yeah, that's the first time hmm, showing up with some damn flowers. And I think maybe a week had passed or two. He was saying like, oh, talk to me, waiting out. She just left the class once she seen him out there. And she was trying to act like, you know, I don't want to be bothered with this, but he still was able to. She should have went out rope, another damn door. Rope her back in. Mm -mm -mm. And then he really roped her in because yeah. after this is when she starts her little bit of involvement into mm -hmm. his affairs. Yep. Now, this time she's toting the money, mm -hmm. but, you know, that still involves her and that still mm -hmm. makes her, you know. Mm -hmm. So, Moochie, what did you think about this? Because I would have liked to know, well, I guess... I guess it really uh, to me, matter, it seemed but... like he knew somebody was following him, and that's why he sent her. Because she yeah. looks so innocent, and you wouldn't expect somebody like that to be doing that, but I think they've was they been watching him. Yeah, because the friend says that. He says the other girl was too, what, too hood or something they said, or too street. Mm -hmm. I can't remember mm -hmm. the exact wording. But that's why they wanted her to do it. And she didn't want to do it. You can tell that she didn't want to do it. But, you know. Yeah, she looks scared and everything. Yep. Yep, yep. And then the friend asked about him. And I thought that was so weird. I was like, I feel like it's about to be something with these two. Because of the way that he, uh, the way that he asked. So, what's up, Bruce? Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming through. Uh because of the way that he asked, you know, and I was like, okay, what's going to happen with these two? So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's me thinking the worst of people, but I don't know what I was thinking was about to go down in that scene. <laughs> I was just like, what's going to happen? So the dad decides that he's going to come and check on his baby girl, y'all. Did y'all think she was going to say anything or y'all think she too caught up at that point? Yeah, she was caught up and not only that, I believe this is when the dad is like, yo, what is going on? Because we had some bounty hunters show up at the house mm -hmm. looking for your damn boyfriend. And that caught her off guard. She wasn't expecting him to say that. And then she says she was going to come by to like the next morning, you know, I promise. And he like, I don't want to hear no excuses. She just says she was, you know, too tired to talk right now. But, of course, she wasn't going to go to no damn bed. <laughs> exactly. Let me see if I can. Let's see what we got here. Because I want to pull up some of the real stuff as we talk about some of the other stuff. So let me see. I thought her parents was too lax with that move. Oh, so, it's like she said. She didn't know how to navigate it. And she didn't know how to come out of it because she was way into deep. So... I mean, shoot, shoot. I mean, woo. I don't know. This story is just so, it's just a lot. So let's move on because, you know, she didn't take her butt home. She took her butt over there. And then this is when we are first about to go on the run. And when he brings old girl with him, um, I, I knew it right then. I was like, yeah, that is something. Like the fact that she's there, right there, come on now. So, but Kimba, I guess, I don't know if Kimba didn't see it, didn't want to see it. I, I don't know. Yeah, she definitely, at least the way they portrayed it here, didn't seem to notice or to be thinking about the fact of what could possibly be happening with them two. She was more so trying to be like, oh, let me put my shirt on. I'm going with you. And he telling her, no, he had a whole nother plan for her. <laughs> Child, listen, I'm sorry. I, I get it. I've been young and naive too, but ain't no way in the world you was about to tell me to stay here and clean up this place and then go to my mom's house. Baby, soon as he would have left. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even still been laying there sleeping on the couch. I'd have been gone from then. <laughs> yeah, why did she come back home? I was Shit. like, yo, I would have went home with this, man. This is too much for me. I just walked into this. I don't want no parts of yeah. it. I don't care. Especially I you, when she I love was me. asking where the <laughs> guy was and she saw that. Yeah, that on the shoes. Yeah, mm -hmm. bye. Yeah. Out of there. But she eventually goes back to her mom's house. And then that's when the FBI come a looking for Khalif. Khalid. Khalif, whatever his name is in here. That's when they come looking for him. And they're tearing up the room. Her mom is like, he not in the drawer. I mean, and I'm like, <laughs> y'all treating her like she is the criminal. <laughs> and it, it just... Uh, Everything about that scene was just too much as well. I'm like, y'all should be out there looking for him. Y'all know goodness well he's not there. Stop playing. 
Mm -hmm. So there's that. So let's see. Let me get past this. So then the the phone call and he wants her to meet him. You know, she's trying to tell him about what's going on with the parent, you know, like, and then that's when she decides to leave y'all. Like, what was your thoughts, Moochie, about her deciding to leave this note and leave and go be with? I was like, what the heck? Like, you know you having a baby. Why even trying to leave? Not stay with you. You know, you're going to be on the run with this baby. That oh, That's the first thing I was thinking about is the child, man. Yeah, but at this point, she didn't know she was pregnant yet. I just, you know, she just, it's like, I can understand, but then I, I feel like I can't on some parts just because of the type of mind frame that I had. But I can't understand you being head over heels for somebody. And he's saying the right things to her. He's basically like, your parents have each other, you know. Who do I have? I need you here with me. Da 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 da. And he beat her in the head, and she fell for the okie doke. And that's why she left her mama. You know the letter. Listen, I, I don't. I done left my mama house a couple times when I was younger. I'm just gonna keep it real, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I think we all have done that. Yeah, and so we have yeah. to add on the added thing that she was also in an abusive relationship. And when yeah. you add in that abusive relationship part, yeah. it takes a little bit of a different turn yeah. from Absolutely. what. You know, somebody who's not in an abusive relationship, we, you know, you might be able to think a little bit clearer because you're yeah. like, oh, hell no, nah, I ain't gonna go yeah. do this bull, you know, mm -hmm. but when you're in at that this type point, he already had her mentally, physically, it was just like, you know, yeah, he, he was in her head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was in her head. Exactly. Yeah. And the crazy part about it is that this is a lot of people's stories. The people who are locked up, they're not bad people. Like some of these people got caught up in some fuck boys for real. I'm just keeping it real. They got caught up in these F boys and now they're having to do all this time because they was trying to be ride or die or they didn't know shit and got yeah. caught up. And that story is the worst story is to not know or to find out at the wrong moments. You know what I'm saying? To find out at the wrong time and you ain't had nothing to do with it. I feel but like she should have walked away once he sent her to do that money. Yeah. I, like, that would be the that would be the thing that I would have said too is that she should have walked away. But once again, she caught up and she's in an abusive relationship. Is she yeah, he probably didn't leave her alone. He probably was one of them type of stalking niggas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that part. Yeah, where you just showing up everywhere. <laughs> so now they Bonnie and Clyde out here in this mug now. <laughs> they they was though. I mean, they wasn't doing any jokes or anything like that. Not that we know of, but I'm just saying they was. Yeah. Uh, I think she says that she never did anything besides the the money part that they showed us in the thing. But other than that, she never touched anything. I think she says that somewhere in one of her interviews. Mm -hmm. But um, but she is on the run with a fugitive. And that in itself is the crime. You know, so nobody's absolving her crime because I know I'm not because she is, she, she's just she just didn't deserve. 25 yeah, years and absolutely. she didn't deserve her for people to put 250 something grams. How you gonna give somebody else charge to somebody right, else? Right, to me, yeah. No. Yeah. So these two are kind of moving around. We in Atlanta, we on the run. Then I think we gotta go. I think we in Houston, yep, San Diego. And then this okay, is- Okay, that's when she found out she was pregnant. pregnant. Yeah, I that. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, they was hopping all around like that's no way to live either. Uh, that's when she should have went back home. So right yeah, she, she wanted to go back home at this point, and it was crazy how she was asking him, was he happy? Like she looked like she was scared, you know, wanting to know what his reaction was gonna be. And he said he was happy. Sure ain't look happy to me. <laughs> I know. Me neither. We, I was like... we, we gonna find out later why. <laughs> Yeah, I was. I thought I was like, "What in the world is going on?" Yeah. You know, we in Seattle. She big pregnant at this point, and yeah. then here we go again with another. He gets angry about. Um, I can't think of who the dude was. Got picked up, 
And not to mention, I oh, I got to go back and mention this part. What's her name that already turned on him? She's already turned on him. When he sends for her, a girl has already turned on him. And that's why they are on the run the way they are. I forgot to mention that part. I can't think of her name, y'all. Whatever it was. Mm -hmm. you... <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think it was Simone. Yeah, she turned on him. She she got her senses and said, hell to the no. Um, and this is kind of when I feel like Kimba gets her wake up call. Mm -hmm. She says something to him about that's why you chose me. Yep, exactly. She starts to see it. <laughs> and I think for because for some people, they their wake up calls come. They all come different. You know, you never know when that wake up call is going to come. That's why I never want to you know, I never want to. I don't know what where people are in their particular journeys when you're going through something like this. And I think for Kimba, it was just, okay, I'm pregnant. You just put your hands on me again. I'm starting to realize that I was chosen for a reason. You could have had anybody else that you wanted, you know, but you chose me because you knew I would be right here. You knew that this was the outcome because oh girl wouldn't, but mm -hmm. who is? Mm-hmm. Her. So she had a point and then, you know, they have a conversation and then this is when she decides to go. I think, let me see if I can bring up the, they have after this, you know, cause he puts his hands on her again. We just don't skip past it. And then he does his lovey dovey thing. Like he always do. But at the same time, I did respect the fact that he told her to go home basically told her to go ahead and go. He wasn't, this time he wasn't, because at first I want to say he told her, didn't he tell her when she first brought it up that um, that she wouldn't know how what to say, that she would get called up? Yeah, and, that's mm -hmm. how he started getting angry with her, because he was like, you a little slow, you ain't gonna know how to answer their questions, they gonna trip you up, you ain't smart enough. Mm -hmm. All of that. So, yeah, so here we are, 1994, and she has turned herself in. And this is where it gets even more crazier. What's up, Inga Binga? This is where it gets even more crazier, y'all, because you have a lawyer that walks out of the room. I knew right then she wasn't finna get a fair shake. I said, Yeah, the lawyer was this with it. This lawyer pissed me off, too. Yeah, Trash. yo, he was with it. You know what? You know what? This, this is when. The whole prison thing where it became a business. So they was locking people up like this and the lawyers was with it because they was getting a percentage of things because sometimes they had shares in these prisons. Mm. Okay. That's yeah, because he me. over here talking about he cool with them and then he he's saying, oh, I'm going to go make a phone call. And she's literally like, should I wait for you to come back? Oh no! What do you mean? Like, what lawyer says that? What? None. None. Okay. And she turned herself in. Where's her parents? None. Like they should. I would have had my parents in there with me, even though I'm grown. I don't care. <laughs> I know you can't do that. I'm just kidding. They probably, you know, in their yeah. mind, they like they got the lawyer, and you know, hey, he's so supposed to take care of it. Hey, Lisa, Lisa. Hey. So, you know, it is what it is. Oh, yeah, they set her up from the get go with this. Um, Candy, they was on run for like I believe it was almost a almost year. Almost a year, yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. All right, we finna bring this other one in. We finna see what she had to. Say. So, boom. She didn't handle, sell, or use them, and they fixed they sales to give her two hundred and fifty to add to say that she was in possession two hundred and fifty four grams, y'all two hundred and fifty four. Mm -hmm. like, that book was blank. Remember when she they showed mm -hmm. the paper and yeah. the, and before she the father said, "Is that supposed to be like this?" I'm like, yeah. Once you found that out. Yep. 
Yep. Uh, Kimba actually, uh, she brought that up to them. She wasn't, she was a smart cookie. You know what I'm saying? She was very uh, intelligent and she brought that up. She didn't want to sign that, but you're looking at your parents, you're looking at your lawyer, they're asking, you know, the parents are just going by what the lawyers, I don't blame them in no way, form or fashion. They just listening to the person that they hired that's supposed to give them legal advice and that is supposed to be there for their client. You know, it ain't like she had no public defender. She had a real lawyer that was being paid for. <laughs> you know, that's what right. makes it so much worse. That makes it so much worse. Because, yeah. you know, I can almost understand these public defenders. They just, you know, but a lawyer you paid for? Yeah, and- that's, that's, that was the messed up part. And, and it seemed like the judge wanted to make an example out of her, but this was a person that never got in trouble. A college at student. At all. And she gets 294 months. She was like me. She said she couldn't even calculate that. I couldn't calculate it. I said, hell, wait a minute. Let me calculate. I said, oh, hell no. Girl, I got enough fingers for this. Mm-mm. The way they tell you stuff like that's that. That's more time. time. That's than, like 25 years. Yeah, that's more time than some people that take out people get. The person that took my cousin out definitely didn't even get half of that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, right. that's what I mean by football numbers. Yep. She got 25. She got a deuce and a quarter. A deuce and a quarter. (laughs) And the judge, y'all, the judge, this was even sadder because he says that he doesn't believe that she is a danger to anybody, that she doesn't deserve this time, but he's going to, but that at least it could uh, be made an example out of for people, you know, in her situation that she can, that he can, that she can be an example of what poor decisions in your younger years is. I almost want to jump through and choke that damn thing. Yeah, because he literally was saying, like, I wouldn't give you that much time. I can see that, you know, what this situation is. But then if I'm going according to the law, this is what you'll get and it'll prevent other people from doing it. I'm like, what are we talking about here? Like, if you know it's wrong, you the judge, shouldn't you still be able to (laughs) <laughs> it was, it was I, was crazy, I was so mad at this yeah. judge when that happened. I was like, that I, I couldn't believe that. Hold on, let me pull us out. I want to read some of these comments. Give me a second. Let me put us in another view. Oh, not that view. Let me put, try no, not that one either. Okay, that one. There we go. Uh, let me catch. Damn, that was crazy. They just be locking people up on false information. Crooked cops and judges. It's going to jail for a reason. They always want to make an example out of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kendall said. And, and even the terrible. lawyer that was defending her. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. But, you know, from what they showed us here, like, even when he gets the papers and he had to call her father and tell her, he was even like, what the F? When he's looking at it because of seeing them write that 254 in the end, it was because, you know, like you said, it was blank. So he didn't even look like he was expecting for them to do that. And yeah, they really just did her dirty. And unfortunately, she's one of many. Yeah. Exactly. One yeah. of a lot, lot. Now, uh, just like Kendall was saying, those were Khalid's charges. How you going to give me his charges? I ain't touched nothing. I ain't done nothing. If you take this to try, like I, part of me just wish he had never took that plea and that maybe they had just took this to trial. Just maybe she would have ended up with a fair, maybe possibly a fair sentence because there's no way I feel like, because I, I feel like a plea is just a cop out. If I get you to take the plea, then I can I can say my record look good. Oh, we got another drug dealer. And nobody has to know the details. You know, nobody has to know what it really entailed. And in this case, that you really didn't take no drug dealer off. You just gave. Mm-hmm. And then to tell her that she was going to get a couple of months and a couple of months turned into 25 years. Yeah. yeah no. That's what I feel like the, that, that lawyer, her lawyer, should have been um they should have filed something with the ethics committee or something like that because she he did her dirty 
Oh, but that's his friend. His friend. I know him personally. Bullshit. Yeah, I so like I said, like it's a back then it was the prison system was like a cash cow. These people invested in that's when prison the, the, the prison systems was private a lot of them in the South. Still are, and it was a business. So they need more they need more inventory. Exactly. Now you're right, Kendall. That's exactly what they want you to do. You take the plea that is saying that you're guilty. You're take you're saying, okay, I'm guilty, but I'm gonna take this plea deal that's gonna give me lesser time. And it's a lot of people who take plea deals because they don't want to gamble with the what ifs. And in this case, it was <sighs> a horrible gamble because yeah. she if it wasn't for who she was and the parents that she had and all of that she could still be locked up for those 25 years but she was one of and i say this loosely she was one of the luckier people and you know why i say that i just i say it loosely because it's so many people that still locked up for stuff like this right here. And it's not mm -hmm. fair and they know it's not fair. And yet they won't do anything to make it right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's people that's locked up on weed charges in states, which now has made le made it legal. And yep. they're still locked up where they got like a lot of time. Yeah. It's a lot of people that shouldn't be. I mean, they just should. I mean, this was a nonviolent situation. She is. This wasn't a violent crime. This was none of that. It, I just wish she wouldn't have said anything about carrying that money because they ain't even know about that. Listen. She told them that. I would exactly. I, I'm like, why would you even say that? And that's the part where he was right about you didn't. You wouldn't know how to handle the police. Well, I think that and it to was me, he should have told her how to handle them and what not to say. Well, I think it was more so of the fact that they, that they kind of forced that you tell us everything. So you got to give them something and we'll give you this. And her being naive, she told them, you know, something thinking that she was going to get a lesser sentence. Then Khalid ends up getting marked. Right. Mm -hmm. So now that he's marked, the deal is off the table and the lawyer's even like, this is a whole nother ball game. He know that they screwed at this point. He knows it. So why wouldn't you at this? But I guess, you know, I, I can't even say this. I can't even say, why would you not try to do something with your friend? Because you don't care. Because why? You know, you don't care. You got paid your money. You know that this girl is screwed at this point because that mm -hmm. because that very line was blank. That should have never been blank. If I'm a lawyer and I'm doing a deal, there is no way in hell that line is blank. Yeah. Oh, you're going to put me a number right here. Yeah. Period. You can yeah. put a number right there. And that's what a good lawyer would have made sure that that deal was ironclad tight and no bullshit like that should have happened. For mm -hmm. real. Uh, okay, we already read that comment. Okay, so let's see where are we at. Let me move back over here, y'all. I'm sorry. I don't know why I can't figure out how to work. Uh, which my duty today? Oh, because I took my thing out. There we go. You know what we forgot to... um. Mentioned when they was um questioning her, how they told her how this is when she found out about the, the kid and yeah, the girl I, having the other kid. Exactly. They I'm they like, used yo. all that. Yeah, they used but all of that. Even, even so, even though they used that, I'm like, why? They I think they showed her that before she even started talking about the money. That's when she first turned herself in. When he walked out, that's what they showed her. That's mm -hmm. what they showed her. And that's why I said that that's probably why she went ahead and gave them something. I feel like she wasn't giving them nothing until they showed yeah, her. Yeah, because they talked about how she gave them something. And then it was also like, you know, oh, look at her and the baby and them as a family. And it's, oh, you didn't know. Oh, wow. Yeah. Y'all was both around the same time. I'm like, and y'all was right underneath each other noses. And that, of course, had her in her feelings because she didn't have no clue. Yeah. And then that explained why the girl was going as hard as she was at the same time, too. Exactly. Kaleebo. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
self. Okay, let me bring this part back up and let's see what she says next. And that's what I love about her story. Her story, she goes on to help other people. And, you know, you don't always get that. Some people, you know, and, and it's in it to each his own. Like, I, you know, no disrespect to anybody who doesn't. But she, this was something that she felt like she had to do after all that she went through, knowing that other people didn't have those same tools that she ended up having those same resources. So, I mean, kudos to her. Like, seriously. Uh, let me play this part from the end of, from the, from the second part of her speech in the movie. I suffered the consequences of a legal system that all too often targets black and brown people unfairly. And for a long time, I suffered the consequences of my own choices. And then this is the last part. Let me say something and then I'll play it. My own lack of self-worth. I am not a victim. I'm a survivor. I'm a fighter. And the fight has only just begun. Thank you. My own. My bad. Yes, yes, yes. I The young lady who played this part played it so well. Oh, so yeah. Well. She did such a good job with this. Uh, let me see if I can find the last little. Here we go, right here. So, um, we've I've already been showing everybody the clips, but these are just I wanted just in case I couldn't pull up the clips, I was going to bring in the real things just to show you who she was. This is her son. He graduated from college with his master's degree. Um, this is the lady I was talking about right I here. I like her. Yeah. yeah. Elaine Jones. When she came to her to tell her that she was going to help her, she thought her parents was paying the money. Mm -hmm. She was like, I can't let them do anymore. And yep. she was going to really take the time. And and then they was like, no, we got you. We got you. That, I, that part was so good to hear. Here we go. This is the lady I was talking yeah, about. Two consecutive with. life sentences. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Okay. That's just, that's too much. It says between 1980 and 2020, the number of incarcerated women in the United States increased from 26 to th 26, 326 to 152 to 854. That's a lot, y'all. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, it says the vast majority of women in prison were victims of violence prior to their incarceration, including domestic violence and sexual assault. Mandatory minimum sentencing laws continue to this day day Whew. yeah that was a lot this was a heavy one um i want to give y'all the final thoughts on this one uh moochie just your final thoughts anything you have to say uh about the movie just it, it just whatever girl go for it i'm glad they put this movie out because it shows a cautionary tale to to, to young ladies and it's consequences, even if you think you, if something's not right and you get that feeling, you walk away. And, and, and I know it's hard, but it's just like, to me, I hope people, the way they got the, this, this, the whole system, once they go in there, a lot of people get ignored. So especially the, the women, men get visits and all of that. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right, Tamika, you go. Uh, any final thoughts on this one? Hey, Zary. Yeah, I thought it was good. It definitely was emotional. I'm glad that they showed it too because a lot of people may not be familiar with the story. They may not know that it's something that still goes on or how deep it is. I know that most of us know, you know, that there's a difference in the time that people get, we know that when it came to the drugs, and most times it would just be like, oh, that's the, you know, hood problem, the ghetto problem, the black people mm -hmm. problem. But then later when it started showing up with more opioids. and with opioids and things of that nature, then we started saying, oh, we got to get rehabilitation places. We got to get help where you didn't really hear that before. It was either you was the drug addict or you was the one that was selling the drugs and we didn't care much you more than go that. to jail. Yeah. yeah. And so I would like to see more changes happen with this. 
since we know all the facts, and nobody can't act, you know, <laughs> pretend like it's not an issue. This is definitely okay. is. Unfortunately, I had some family members that have been on both sides of it. So, yeah. Mm -mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, hey, Terry. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I was trying to see if we had any other people in the comments that said anything. Okay. No worries. Okay, y'all. So um, let me, I'm gonna let y'all tell me what y'all got going on your channel. Then I'm gonna shout out the chat and then we're gonna get up out of here. Moochie, what you got going on your channel, boo? Oh, I'm about to go live in a couple of minutes. As soon as we um, are done with this, we are gonna talk about the last predictions for BML. Also, we'll be talking about the Diddler. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we'll also be talking about Angel Reese. So I just want to um just come on and chat chat it up with me and um let's have some fun before the episode comes on. Okay, well I'll be on I'll be in the chat um listening to y'all. I got some the that Angel Reese thing was too much, but I got some thoughts on it, but I'll I'll be in the chat. And mm -hmm. what you got going on in your channel? Um, I'm, you know, going, I guess, to a review for the BMF episode, and, <laughs> and, child, Saturday is my What You Should Be Watching and Self Care Saturday, and I actually am going to be also shining a light on my cousin. I'm very proud of her. She has a foundation called the Mother's Love and Beyond, and they're having their first event, and, you know, or, you know, basically, since it is Autism Awareness Month, and her foundation is surrounding autism, you know, just kind of shining the light on all of that. And then, you know, I use it with positive affirmations and all that good stuff. So if y'all have a chance, make sure y'all come and hang out with us. Um, and I believe it's my turn for BMF on Monday. That's going to be interesting. And then <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Yep. After yep, that, yep, I'm yep. gonna be on my vacation now. <laughs> I'm okay, to I was that. gonna say Tamika <laughs> taking a break, break. So listen, I have never seen you so lax. Like usually, it'd be like I got this, I got this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so it's yes. nice to see you take a break. We all need like a little mental break sometimes from this. But uh, on my channel, we just did our ruthless roundtable on yesterday. Uh, my Ruthless reviews will actually be up tonight. I y'all know I was so tired or something. I don't know what it was that I forgot that I did my ruthless review. I found it in my folder. I said, so I didn't forget <laughs> to do it. I literally thought I forgot to uh -oh. do it and found it from last week. Wow. And I just, that, that was because you were sick last week. You was just mm -hmm. out of it child and I had a thumbnail everything like I had did everything for it I just never uploaded and then I told myself that I didn't do it wow so mm -mm. there was that so I'm gonna upload both of those regardless because you know I, I did it so it's gonna still go up <laughs> mm -hmm. and then we have like you said BMF um technically we have another movie night that's next week um because I had to move this one to this week uh, and I guess we can figure out if we still want to do that or if we want to go the week after that. But we'll talk about that later. But um, let me see. Oh, Diara. Diara from Detroit. That was good. And we are going to talk about that on Sunday. And then I think that's it. I think that's it for me for right now. But anything else, just, you know, turn on your notifications because you never know. Oh, but yeah. I forgot. Oh, I did forget something. I'm also doing on Wednesdays. The rewatch of Mayor Kingstown. So come on through. Keep your notifications on. We are, we're actually doing episodes two and three of the first season. That we'll be talking about that on Tuesday. I mean okay. on Wednesday. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Okay, Mayor of Kingstown. Uh, I and you know what? That made me think about my uh, family business. I have my rewatch for that one uh coming up too so yeah just keep your notifications turned on i don't know what day is gonna drop but i do have it but anyway y'all this was a great talk i really enjoyed this movie uh and i can't wait to see what we're gonna be talking about you know 
on our next movie night. But we're about to get up out of here, guys. Let me go ahead and shout you guys out because we always appreciate you coming through. Uh, we can't do movie night without you guys, so we appreciate you. Candy, thank you. Net Net, uh, Rashonda, Kendall, always showing up. Daria, we appreciate you. Uh, Bruce came through. Steven came through. Mm -hmm. Sally came through. Uh, I think that says Dannon, if I'm not mistaken. I do want to butcher it. I am sorry. Lemon Kush Pup, uh, appreciate you. Monique, 69 Ways. Johnson, of course. Always a pleasure having you. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Inga Binga came through. We appreciate you, boo, for coming through, saying hi. And... Uh, one journey. Appreciate you. Appreciate your super sticker. So anybody else who didn't say anything, we, of course, we appreciate you for hanging out with us and we are about to get up out of here. Y'all until next time, we will talk to you guys later. Peace. Yeah. <laughs>